Okay. Well, welcome to the Richardson Plano Networkers and Connect to Thrive Mastermind today with Jessica Koch. Jessica will speak to us today about the three secrets to scaling your business. In today's mastermind, Jessica will share the fundamental strategies and actions that every entrepreneur and business owner can take today to scale their business. Jessica Koch is an amazing warrior. She's been a national sales professional for more than 25 years, working with Fortune 1000 clients like Disney, Verizon, National Power Utilities, as well as hospitals, government, and universities. Throughout her journey, she successfully trained and managed multiple sales teams nationally who were consistently the top sales producers. She speaks nationally and has been featured on many podcasts, video interviews, and will soon be featured in a published book series titled Profiles in Success, Inspiration from Executive Leaders in the Washington, D.C. area. Jessica's vision is guiding business owners and sales professionals to optimize their sales and marketing using online platforms and proven techniques, enabling a dramatic increase in bottom line results, as well as time for community and family life. Please join with me in welcoming our speaker today, Jessica Koch. Well, thank you. That was such a very nice intro. <laughs> I feel bad it was so long. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah, so I'm excited. This is a good topic. Um, I'm glad we have a few people here. We can actually dig into your personal businesses and apply some of what we're going to teach and talk about today. Um, that's, oh, I feel like, always the very best way to go. Um, I am Jessica Koch. I am the Italian mother of seven, and um, I have been uh, speaking nationally for 25 years and truly love, love, love what I do. And uh, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. I should have asked that earlier. Ah, I have the power. I have the magic. Okay. So one of the things that I like to do when I am teaching, um, PowerPoint is lovely, but you know, we're always fighting the battle of how can we be more efficient and multiply our time and content creation is something we're always trying to make, right? So one of the things, one of the tips that I would give you is if you're speaking for a group and you're going to do a presentation on something, create, if, if it's um, workable to not use PowerPoint, but to use and build an article instead, what I've done here is built an article on um, LinkedIn for my talking points today with you. It keeps me in flow. Sometimes I can share my screen and show it. Sometimes I just keep it to the side for myself so that I can go through my organized thoughts and my presentation. If I'm just talking, I'm not gonna share my slides because now I've you know done something more than just build a PowerPoint that's gonna live in the PowerPoint box right and take up space on your data uh it's actually going to be something that can be liked and shared and commented on and i can put um and i don't know why the screen went away there we go um <clears throat> and i can put the link into the chat and the the people i'm talking to now suddenly have the notes and you know so thinking about your steps and your processes and what you do for a very long time i did use uh, i often use live interface websites because i'm often training in a software tool because i try not to ever be death by powerpoint that person but there was occasions that i needed a powerpoint presentation and my computer is acting a bit wacky here there we go <clears throat> and um so I just, I, I evaluated, and the reason I'm getting to this, going through some of this is I evaluated some of my process of what was I doing? I was doing a lot of speaking. I do a lot of speaking. I enjoy speaking, but what's my process for, for speaking, you know? And so that's what I want you to start thinking about with everything that you do. So the three secrets of scaling your business and reclaiming your time. Um, one of our taglines for my company is grow your profits from seed to orchard, right? Sell more, spend less, but you really can't tend an orchard with your own two hands, right? You, you, can, you can cup that one little tree, you can, you can harvest a, a couple, but what's gonna happen is some of your trees are gonna get sick. Some of the fruit's gonna go uh, raw, bad turn on the vine because you cannot possibly harvest all of that and care for it properly um, without more than just you. 
One of my favorite stories is a client who had just started her consulting business and she only had just three months in, just about three months in, had just two or three consistent clients, was getting, you know, a sprinkle of other opportunities here and there with money and revenue, um, but not a ton, right? Not feeling like, you know, it was time to go hire employees, right? However, this person also knew they did not want to do all the things, all the things that you need to do. You know, Diamond mentioned right in the beginning, and here we are all now in this room, that she loved networking, right? She loved to connect, she loved to network. And we can do a zillion Zooms a week, you know? Um, you can do multiple Zooms a day. And now with Zoom, it's so much more efficient even than that in-person networking is. Back in the day, it was challenging at best to do two a day, right? You could be on for 10 hours a day uh, if you wanted to be. If the schedule is out there, 90% of them are free. I mean, it's unbelievable the availability of global networking you now have at your fingertips in your little office. But, but then what, right? Okay, so when, so think about when you do that, Diamond. Think about, all right, I attend a virtual networking event on Zoom. Then what is the next thing you have to do to make that time serve you? The time that you spent in that room with those people, what's the next thing that has to happen? So hopefully you've saved the chat, right? And then what? Have any, have any of you ever gone back and looked at the chat? I hope the answer is yes, but it's a hot mess. It is a text document that is a nightmare. So what's the next step? Well, you got to take that chat and most logical is to put it into an Excel sheet. And then in, in port it into your CRM system, because that is a much more efficient automated way to, to run that. Now there is some automation that's been released and I don't, don't ask me for the software. I just talked to someone about it. I have to get the name, but there is software now that will take the Zoom chats and automatically with an automation, move them to an Excel sheet. And then what you need to do if you're using a CRM system, which is a contact record management system, that's a software to track your clients and customers if you're not using one now, it will then map the fields of the columns that you have in your spreadsheet and import it to match them directly into um, your CRM system without having to manually type that. Am I, um, stop me and, I mean, there's just a small group of us. Uh, talk to me if I am speaking Greek languages with bad symbols and bad uh, acronyms. And, and I'm telling you things already that are, are, are too out of the scope. Am I good? Is everyone comfortable? No, with this is knowing? great. Actually, Jessica, this is awesome. I mean, I've already, I mean, the, the concept of creating um, one of the things that you, you came out with right out of the box for me is the the what you've got on the screen there which is the linkedin or whatever article yeah a blog uh, for your post wherever yeah. you want to put it it can yeah, go anywhere the, the, right the, use the, that as your your starting board right your leverage board so i started to tell you this story so she didn't want this person didn't want to do all the things right and she was just really early in her business and so what she decided to do was you know, she was hesitant to hire someone, but knew she didn't want to do the things, didn't want to put the company, you know, didn't have to take credit out or how do I hire an employee? This is going to be expensive. What do I do? So her solution was to look around the house and see what they were not using and literally put it up on Facebook marketplace yard sale and made several hundred dollars, like, I don't know, five to $700. They were just selling stuff they weren't using. And put that money to the side and, and designate it to say, this money is going to be for my virtual assistant. And one of the first tasks she took off her plate was doing just what I'm talking about. She would attend the networking events, then the assistant would then put the information into the spreadsheet, then add it to the CRM system. The next step was they would de then reach out to those people and connect with them on LinkedIn and social and other social media platforms, and then send them an email with a, hey, let's have a getting to know you call and learn more about one another. We both attended XYZ event, but let's, let's dig deeper. Here's my calendar link. And this assistant would do all these tasks. And then that person was able to go to the networking events, pass that task to the person, 
and show up for these getting to know you calls because the, her calendar was full with them because the, the team member was doing all the tasks to make sure at all the networking events, all those things were done, which created a workflow, right? It created a success workflow where that person wasn't having to do all their things themselves so that they could do so much more with their time, right? And I'm gonna tell you that um, that person was me, right? So I put some stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Five years ago, I started my consulting firm. I was determined not, I mean, it's the, I like the, I'm a very hard worker. I'm an Italian. I believe in the benefit of hard work, I was raised for hard work, but I like the, the option, the lazy option. I like the option to be lazy. I like to kayak. I like to sew. I like to paint. I walk on the water. I love my hot, hunky husband. I have seven children. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I know from having a high level business development and sales background of a very successful one, what exact tasks need to be done in order to have success in my business. I just also knew I didn't want to do them. And what I can tell you is for just a few dollars um, an hour, if you're not working with a, an agency, I have an agency, it's more than that, okay? Because you're getting all of our service support, organization, trained, hired team, blah, blah, blah. But to go out and find your own person, I'm gonna tell you how to do that in this. Um, for just a few dollars an hour, you really can at any stage in your business, day one, hire someone to work with you based on project need. And so you can say, okay, this is how much you're going to be an hour. Here's the project we have at hand. When you're finished that, that shouldn't take you any more than 10 hours. When you're done, stop, let me know. I'll reach back out to you in a week, a month, a couple of weeks when I have my next project for you. So you don't have to feel like, oh my God, I'm committed to thousands of dollars a month to pay this employee to the pay this person that is not what it is you have power you have control and if you follow the formula that I, I followed when I started to doing this for myself which was one third of every bit of time on task I put on that team member was directed to money making actions Think about the micro tasks that lead you to a customer, like sending that email and getting them booked on my calendar. If I have someone booked on my calendar, hippy skippy, I'm closing that deal because I am good at that. Okay. So I knew if my calendar was full, then my pockets are full. So think about the micro tasks behind the scenes that lead to money making actions. One third of what you hire someone to do should be leading to those. The other third should be social media because welcome to the world. That is where we live. So scheduling and posting and content creation, one third of the time should go to that. The final third can go to admin things, things like, and sometimes admin things are money-making actions. It's interesting. Within the first three years of running my own consulting firm, I learned something about myself. I don't like to send invoices. Guess what happens when you don't send invoices? <laughs> Randy got the answer. People don't pay you. They don't just throw money in the air in your direction. There does need to be a process and a, a system for that. And it wasn't that I had a money block. I was very, I'm very um, windows open. All my windows and doors are open for opportunities and money, abundance. I didn't have money blocks. I had doing the, the due diligence task that was daunting to me of invoicing, right? I mean, I did it. I, I my, my business ran well. I just... It was the thing that I felt the energy of it snagging me up. And I wasn't sure how, oh, can you outsource something like that? Um, David said something fascinating and um, be okay with, I'm okay if you disagree with me because I'm disagreeing with David. Um, because it took me a long time to shift my mindset to a place where I am now where I do, I, I lovingly disagree with you, David. He, he mentioned that we all have this great value. Okay, I agree that we all have a great value. However, in the business that you're building, everyone is replaceable, including you. And matter of fact, every single job in your business, including everything you bring to it and you add, should have at least two other people eventually. That should be the big goal that can do this. Um, running the company, I can even, so I do over a hundred talks right now. I'm hired, I'm, I'm, I just uh, finished a, a one of our largest government contracts ever where the government paid me to teach classes and um, work with clients and do all that. 
Every bit of that doesn't have to be me. I can teach my talks to someone else. I can teach my um, consulting process with checklists and organization and intake forms to another uh, lead team management person on in my company to do that process. So every single task in your company can one day, if you want it to be, automated and replaced by someone else. Now it doesn't have to be, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't have passion and want to work. And I, I am moving next year. We will achieve, I will have achieved that four to six hour work week that I desire. That's what I want to do. Um, but my business will not need me to run. All right. So I've shared with you a little bit about my story and a little bit. So, so I want you to know following that process, and the five years that I've been, we have um, two years ago, we launched the virtual assistant membership program. That'll be September, it'll be our anniversary for that. And since that launched, um, before that, I, had, I, was, I was running a very successful consulting firm. We were doing very well. I had 20, 12 VAs that worked just for me and we were moving along. And two years ago, it was July. Um, so September will be our two year anniversary, but it was July two years ago that in one week, and you need to pay attention to this. And there's reasons I'm telling you this stories because there are um, breadcrumbs about how things show up so that they can, that are, that are perfectly aligned for the direction you should be going for your business and your life. At least I believe that. And one of them was in July, two years ago, in one week, I got the same, Randy will appreciate this, this has to do with questions. I got the same question asked in a different way, 10 different times within a one week period. Now, if that's not the universe hitting me in the darn head with the frying pan saying, hello, Jessica, you need to solve a problem here because all the universe is asking you a question. What are you going to do about it? And personally, I am um, fairly spiritual and uh, believe in meditation and I ponder things and I take time to think. I think um, one of the things, if I could convince you to find an hour a week to put on your schedule and schedule it every single week and make it sacred, don't let anyone touch it. I mean, you do it for your exercise, you do it for whatever else you do it for, but do it just to think. It's one of the greatest things I've taken. I can't even remember which book I took it from, but I read a book and um, the guy, no matter how poor he was, even when he wasn't making money, didn't have a job, wasn't making, paying the bills, he took an entire day every week. Now I haven't taken the leap for the whole day yet, but I challenge you to take it very least an hour because it has brought so much to my brain has, has been solved from that hour of thinking. But when I first got this question, back to my story of that week in July, uh, I meditated on it and, and, and um, had some conversations. Um, and my first knee jerk reaction was create a course on how to do this. People need VAs, they don't know how to get them. Cause you know, my answer to my, the question, first of all, that they asked me was, how do you do this? You're everywhere. How are you everywhere? I see you're posting everywhere. You're speaking everywhere. You're at everything. How do you do it all? They kept asking me that. And my answer was always the same. I do not do it all. I have this amazing team and they do all these things for me. And then the next question was, well, how do you do that? And so with some pondering, I decided, okay, well, maybe we just make, because I already had some online courses for other things that I taught and consulted with be, so that people could have access to them at a lower cost versus working with one-on-one. -on -one. I always try to give lots of price point options, you know? And um, then with a little more time spent on that before doing anything, really what the universe was saying to me is they wanted it done for them. And, you know, interesting enough, other than doing it for myself, I don't really know how to do that. I, I hadn't run an ad, a VA agency. I didn't, you know, but I said, okay, well, why not? I was uh, in, in August of last year to December, I was scheduled probably for 50 different speaking events in that short time crunch um, and summits and things. And so I just started whispering about it. I said, hey, we're going to build a plane in the air. You want to wear a parachute and get on with me. And we're going to test this virtual system membership program. We don't know what we're doing yet, but it might be fun. How do you feel? You want to do it from that conversation. Every time I spoke at the end of my speaking, 
I got what I will tell you is a tsunami of customers that have not stopped. We got we, we started with our launch. We had to get out of our launch phase very quickly into full-blown um, um, running. And to this day, we have not put it on our website. And it's, we have, we onboard one to three brand new customers every single week without fail, sometimes more. And we are now at 50 virtual assistants globally and almost a hundred country, a hundred clients from 17 different countries. And I use the formula I talked to you about with the, I got, I actually believe in hiring in threes. I interviewed and hired three people right away, gave them each one small project, limited them per hour each. So I was still stayed within my own budget. And I did the one third, one third, one third. So that every time they were doing something, they were actually making me more money than I was spending always. So that I was able to then hire two more people. And, hi and the reason you do at least three is because of this. You're dealing with, so I, I have people on our team from Dubai and Pakistan and Philippines and, um, uh, uh, oh my God, so many places, um, India, a lot from the Philippines, Dubai, oh, Jamaica, uh, Australia, like we have so many team members and um, sometimes their internet goes out and sometimes they have a life and their aunt needs them for a day or a week and sometimes they have bad um the power has a blackout or there's bad weather or there's and if you what happens is if you start to get used to someone else doing something for you it is there should be like a huge warm and labor larger than um the one that doesn't appear large enough on cigarettes like this is addictive like no lie Okay, when someone starts taking a task off your hands and you no longer have to do it, when you then have to go back to doing it, it's physically painful. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that more than one person always know how, knows how to do all the things that you don't wanna do so that you never have to do them. At least that's my belief. Okay, this is my option to be lazy. Remember the lazy option. <laughs> go ahead, Randy. So um, this is pretty interesting because I, I, I didn't do it the way you just did it. And I'm now mm -hmm. sort of slapping myself a little bit. But uh -huh. how did you ensure the quality of output with all those different people as sort of quasi independent support? Well, there is a formula for that. There's a recipe for everything, right? So we check in. We, well, some of my team I check in daily with. But um, my clients, when we do it with our agency, I can't make it mandatory because they drive the bus, but I strongly lean on them to meet weekly with the team. Like we make it, this is part of the process. When do you want to choose your weekly meeting to meet with your team? Five to 15 minutes. It's all it takes. There's an agenda for that. There's an agenda for that meeting. That meeting consists of what did you guys work on last week? How long did it take you? Um, we do how many hours do you have month left in the monthly package because people buy blocks of hours from us. Then we do how many do you have questions about that and what's the focus for the upcoming week and then the final agenda is if the team member wants to introduce new projects or train on something new or has something that they need to shift the gears. This helps so that the team knows what to expect and and how to handle new incorporating new projects and also make sure the old ones are running smoothly and the communication is um, uh, wicked strong. How we add new people to our team is I pair people for everything. So everybody, like everything and everyone gets a lead person and a support person. So if we've added a new team member, they're never gonna be a lead person on the client for a very long time. They're, and they're not even gonna actually see a client for a while. Our process is we train them in the systems, we give them what they call background, and test projects. They're real projects, but they're things like research a list of podcasts that are on um, uh, cryptocurrency because we have a client who wants to get on podcasts that talk about cryptocurrency and he wants to be a guest. So research a list of a hundred of these. And then they work with the management team and we grade them on responsiveness, quality of work, time uh, to, of completion for work and um, communication ability and you know all of these different things. And when they've done some projects like that, then they get introduced and get to be a part of 
a client team where they're front facing and they meet with the clients and, and customers and things. So um, is that what you were asking me as far as quality control? Yes, that was an excellent answer. Thank you very much. We also incorporate test projects in our hiring process. So the job oh, okay. posting, in order to reply to our job posting, we'll ask them to look at my website and go find 10 other websites of companies that are in my industry. Or send me a list of the top 50 producing um, keywords for my website. or you know, something very simplistic, but they have a task they have to complete. Mm -hmm. And then they have to have steps they have to follow. So we want to see if they can follow directions because we're right. a systems-based company. If you can't follow directions, then you can't work with us very well. So once you've completed that task, then you have to email this person with this subject line and, and send it to them in this format and uh, follow these steps, right? And, and so, um, that and that happens all throughout our interview process so when we're interviewing live we do group batch interviews because we are hiring so drastically so we have any so it's a zoom room like this we have anywhere from five to 15 zoom uh candidates uh to hire we hire in a batch format it's much like a networking event we introduce the company overall and our goals and our values and our mission and then we ask everyone to go around the room they list who they are what country they're from what time zone they're in how many hours they're available a week and their skill sets and anything they'd like to share with us about themselves and then we put something in the chat and that's a copy and paste. It's a format because it's a part of the recipe, right? So everything has an agenda and a recipe. And then that they receive that with directions of what they're supposed to do next, right? So everything is, that's your testing, Randy. That's your, if they don't get through that and you always need to interview twice as many people as you want to hire. So if you want to hire three, I would interview 12, truthfully, but I'm hiring 60. So we've been, um, we've been, we've interviewed, we probably interviewed, I think when it's said and done, we'll be close to 150. So there's always an overage because there's going to be at least some that you're going to be like, mm. and then we always answer them one of three ways. So there's a formula for how we follow up with all of the, the people too. And they get an email that says one of three things. We have an immediate opportunity for you. We'd like to offer you a contract and a, and a few sample, some training and a few sample projects um, to see how you fit with our management team. And then we say, oh, we think you're fantastic. However, uh, we'd like to hold on to your uh, information for a future opportunity as we're always growing and hiring. Do we have your permission to reach out to you in the future to see if you're available? And then finally, we say it was a wonderful experience meeting you. Uh, we don't think you're the, necessarily the best fit for our company, but we miss, we wish you much joy, success, and happiness in your future career. And so we have one of three ways of answering them, but none of these did I have to figure it out, right? Everything I could tell you just like that because we have a system. So I want us to agree on a couple of things so far and tell me what's my time stamp because um, I want to make sure I get to the rest of what I want to teach you guys. David, what's my time stamp? Like how much time do I have left? to? So you're, you're at 1220 um, and we, we really want to, you know, with everything kind of land the plane uh roughly uh about 10 till the hour just so that we make sure okay that... so do i have 10 more minutes is that i'm just asking what do i have oh no you've got you know you, we're we, you've got another 20 minutes but i'm okay. assuming it's going to be an interactive like this i can yes. guarantee you right now seeing who's on plus we have a few people that have joined uh in con you know connection with other things is that you're going to um you're, we're going to have a lot of questions. So you need to get through your focused yeah. content so that yep. we can come back to it. Yeah, I'm just checking the chat to make sure that wasn't for me. Okay. All right. I will. I promise I'm getting there. Okay. okay. So first of all, I do want us to, um, I'm hoping that you guys have, have some big dreams. Um, and um, I'm, I'm also hoping that we can agree that in order to accomplish big things that you need a team, right? I started with my orchard scenario. You're not going to get out there with your basket and go pick all those darn apples and climb to the top of the tree. Are you, David? Do you want to climb to the top of the tree? Do you want to pick all those apples? I don't think so. Shake your head. No, if you agree with me. No, we don't want to do this. We don't want to pick all those apples ourselves. It's hot out there in the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, you don't want to do that. So, um, so here are 
some of the basics, whether you're doing this alone and you're looking to, because there's a, there's a time and a place everyone's like, oh, well, just let's automate everything. It's just me. I'm just going to automate everything. Well, that's not actually the process. <laughs> the process first is uh, figure out what you want to do. So what is your goal? All right. So that's the very first thing. What is the big thing you want to achieve or what's the specific project you want to achieve, right? And then you need to think about what are the steps I need to take? So uh, identify the steps. That really is first, first and foremost. Now, if it's just you, do they decide who should do them? Well, tag, you're it if it's just you. And I'm hoping that I'm leaning you to, it does not have to be just you. So um, identify the steps and then test in time and document them, okay? And truthfully, in, I'm, I'm fibbing if I say, in the early days, it was probably 80% of the stuff. And now it's more like 70 or 60% of the stuff I physically did myself and tested, time tested. So meaning, how long does it take to research 100 podcasts and put them on a spreadsheet, right? Do you know the answer to that? Well, I don't, I'm never going to do that project. I'm going to assign someone who's been with me a while to do that project, test that out. And then I know now it's on average, it's going to take X by new, n a number of hours. And one of the things we added, because um, data and tracking and systems go together, you must track your data so that you can judgment things reasonably and realistically, right? So one of the things for our spreadsheets now, when our team is working on spreadsheets, first of all, we have a spreadsheet directory. So any spreadsheet that ever gets created throughout the company, you hear how many clients I have and how many people I have. Do you know how many spreadsheets that is a check? That's a lot of flipping spreadsheets. So we make sure that when you create a spreadsheet, it goes into our spreadsheet directory and who created the spreadsheet and what client it's for and what project it is and the name of the spreadsheet and all that goes on the spreadsheet. <laughs> and at the top of the spreadsheet that's created is a statement and a documentation of the date that it was added to, you guessed it, the spreadsheet directory. So if I'm looking at a spreadsheet, I don't have to go, oh, I wonder if this is on the directory, right? And then guess what else? You cannot rely on any one software or platform for anything. So if you're using Google Share Documents, which right now we are, you need to also have a system for backup for everything. Once a quarter, everything gets backed up in my company, everything. Um, we back up our LinkedIn profiles, we back up our Facebook profiles, we back up everything. Everything is also in an external hard drive linked to three clouds. And we're about to buy our own server because I am, yes, obsessive about the backups. And so one of the things you should know is, guess what? I, I'm sure this is a new flat newsflash for you. David, try not to fall out of your chair and be too shocked. But guess what you do not own? You do not own Google. And so if you're using get Google Share Docs or even paying for their storage, Guess what can happen and has happened to people I know? Suddenly the email account no longer exists and Google doesn't know why anymore. And guess what's connected to it? Everything you had in that Google Share Drive, all your everything. And if you're using Google Share Docs and Excel sheets, guess what you don't have anymore? You don't have them, they're gone though. So guess what we do? Um, we, first of all, we make copies of everything we let more than one team member work on. Then we also download into what I call a hard file document. So we convert it to an actual an Excel sheet or PDF or Word doc or whatever have you. And then we import that and upload it to a storage facility called Dropbox separate from Google. So we have multiple cloud sharing bases as well as external hard drives and thing on, on our hard computer. So I know I'm probably freaking your brain out a little bit, but I'm telling you there's so I'm sharing with you, there are systems to back up. And on my calendar quarterly, there's a wacko reminder for me and my team. It's backup day and everything gets backed up. Okay. Because you only own your data. And, but if you don't hold your data in places that you own, you also don't own that. I know that that is scary, crazy, but this is the world we live in banana sauce, right? All right. So, doc, so I was at step number three, test and time and document the stuff you're doing. If do yourself a favor, if you don't feel like you're going to be able to hire someone till next month or the month after for a VA, which I'm telling you is totally long because there's something in your house that you do not use that you can sell on Facebook, but um, 
if you're going to wait, everything you're doing, if you're creating your social media posting calendar for the week, if you're building your newsletter, if you're building a landing page for your company or yourself, if you're doing the follow-up process after you've gone to a networking event, Diamond, get on Zoom, share the screen, record that puppy, and talk to yourself. It's not going to take you any more time than it would have you just doing it without talking to yourself and recording it. And now you have documented and time tracked the process without it taking you any more work than it would have. Make sense? So data and time track your projects. Then you review. Remember I said an hour a, a week to think? You review the process and think about it. All right, what am I doing? Okay, and this happened, this is a real life thing happened to me. We haven't fixed it, the problem yet. I realized that we send an intake form in our onboarding process to a client. We have a process and we send them one of the processes, they get a getting started email when they're ready to work with us. And in that is an intake form that they share just a little bit of information with us, right? Where are their platforms? What are some of their goals? It's a really basic, it's a one sheet. I try to keep things simple. I'm a simple girl. I want the process to be easy and fast so that you'll actually do it, right? Take action. But guess what we have to do then? When we get that form, we um, manually add it to the Trello board, which we use in a project management for them. And then we manually add it to a spreadsheet. Well, guess what? If we turn that into a Google form or a Jot form, that'll automatically import. But you know why I caught it? Because I took some time and I was just thinking about that one process. And I took my time to think. Thinking is I mean, a big deal. I mean, we go along our lives running and putting out fires and chasing the next sale and doing the next thing and getting to the next meeting and hoping we're showered and try to eat dinner with, with our family and go do this and go do that and go to this and go to that. And we just don't sit and think, you know, and sometimes it's not about what's the challenge, what's the problem. Sometimes it's what's my process right now. And that's all I was doing. There was nothing wrong with my onboarding process. It wasn't hurting anyone, but I just pinched in some time and some cost savings for my company by having that time for myself to make my company even better than it was before. So that's what, where this is, review automation opportunities. That's an automation opportunity in the process that's already very automated, by the way, I'm going to say. And then you test it again. So when you get to this point where what you're doing, so building, you know, doing your follow-up, and you create the workflow and you create the system and you've timed it and you've got the video training, then you hand that to this XYZ person without giving them much training and say, we're going to do a test of our system. So I want you to review the steps and the video and take the steps. Now, make sure you're doing it with something safe. You're not trying to email a thousand of your people on your news, you know, newsletter without doing some you know, uh, verification, checking, testing before it launches out to the world and the public. But if it's a task that they can do that before they hit send or go and it reaches the world for you, you can verify they've done everything. Let's see where the holes are because if they miss a step and it isn't as perfect as you would have done it, it's because you have missed a step in helping them make it as perfect as if you would have done it. There are other interesting um, myths like, oh, only I can know that. Like you only get 5,000 friends on Facebook. How stupid is that? Anyone else wanna raise their hand and complain? Cause I think that's really stupid. And so that means I have to be very careful who I can say yes to which means, oh my gosh, how can I give that task to someone else? Because I've got to go in, I look at their profile, I decide, okay, for this reason, this reason, and this reason, this is not a person I want. And then I look at the next one. Now, guess what? You may not realize it, and it isn't just your judgment. You have red flags. And so what I taught someone, it took 20 minutes, and I got on a Zoom like this, and I went through the people who a friend requested me, and I said, okay, this person, here are three red flags that that says we wish them well and send them a good life, but we're not going to friend them. And then this person, oh, these are three green lights for us. We love this. this. These are our people. This is what we're looking for. This is a go light. This is a yes friend those. And then I stopped talking and I stopped sharing my screen. I had the team member log in for me on, on my behalf as an admin or whatever it is they were. And then they shared their screen and they did it. And I just listened. 
not an easy thing for me, by the way, if you hadn't caught on to that. And they said, this person's yes. And why it's a, so it's always the N Y. So this is good because, and these are the reasons, and this is not what we're looking for because, and then these are the reasons. This is how you can teach someone to do anything for you just about. And it's also how you can improve your service that you provide for your customers. I also have my customers answer this question. I, I tell them that they're gonna say to me, Jessica, this is my commitment. This is the communication commitment in handwriting, in blood, in, in John Hancock, in massive, honorable, Knights of the Round Table kind of integrity ink that you're going to communicate with me. Jessica, I love working with your team and it would be so much better if, and I want you to promise that you always tell me it would be even better if, unless we have wowzered your socks off and you cannot think of a better thing in the universe of all history and all time based on how we're providing service for you, I want to know from you every month it could be better if. And then we bust our batoonies to make sure that we're meeting the it'll be better if piece for them and wowzer their socks off. That is our all ultimate goal all of our clients will be totally sockless that is our that is where we're going in our in our mission statement <laughs> sockless clients all right so i want you uh, to think about you know some big goals and projects can be brought through this the system that i talked to you about right well now also standard operating business also can go through this system so marketing so just the getting seen right so get seen so think about what your marketing steps are first of all there's a there's a, a clue factor here you're gonna have at least five ways that you get seen by people so networking in person speaking social media ads emails you send. Well, i don't know whatever your ways are you're gonna have ways that you get seen right and each one of those ways that you get seen in each one of those marketing steps has its own system and process you develop the ad or you show up to the networking event and here's your pitch. Here's your 30 second commercial when it's your turn. And, and here's what you do after and everything has the steps where we talked about that a little bit. And then think about um, what happens then if, if Diamond goes to a networking event and her assistant then puts it, the chat into an Excel sheet. She connects with the people on social media. She sends them an email and gets them to book an appointment on her calendar. And then Diamond then meets with them. What does the interested customer do next other than schedule that appointment? What is their journey, right? So you need to map out this journey too so it's very clear because you will get less customers if your customers do not know what to do next right? So you need a system for that. So when you're presenting to and, and how you're presenting and what are your clothes styles? Do you use more than one? Do you have more than one? Because guess what? You're presenting to more than one person and some people like different kind of clothes styles, right? And do you even know if you have a clothes style or do you feel like, oh, closing is yucky. I can't close them. Of course you can. If you don't sign contract and take their money, you're like Randy and you just do everything for free, you know? I mean, so you absolutely need a technique there to bring them home. But even Randy needs some sort of closing technique if someone meets with them and yeah, he's a nice guy, but why would I need him to help me pro bono scale my business? Because he never came around to bring me to the point where I'm like, oh, I need you, Randy, please come rescue me, help me solve this problem. He is closing whether he is getting money or not about it. Um, and then in the presentation, when the, you, you got the person going like this, oh, yes, okay, you don't have to explain more, sign me up. Like, what do they do next? Do you know what to do next? You need to help them get to get to that point. And then how you onboard your client. I just talked to you about how I work through that system. Schedule time to think and have a process. Because I can tell a client when they're on a call in a presentation with me, once I know they're ready and they tell me and they raise their hand, we're ready to go. Um, I say, okay, here's what's going to happen next. I set clear expectations. 
our team, my assistant is going to send you a getting to know you call. I mean, a getting started call uh, email. And in that getting started email, it's going to contain and I tell them what the attachments are and I tell them what's in the body of the email and what they're supposed to do. There's no guesswork. Go pay your bill, book your onboarding call with me and sign the contract and send it back. And I mean, we just tell them exactly what to do. You have to have that in order to scale your system because then someone else who's doing that for you instead of you can then tell you, tell them what exactly to do. There's a formula. They're going to know how to do it right? And then how you deliver your product, whether it's um, an actual product, or it's the, you know, think about how uh, the finest top chefs in the world, they call it plating, right? How do you plate and deliver what you are presenting to your customer? Or how do you, when you ship it, when, I don't know about you, but when I get things, even from like eBay or like Poshmark or something, I mean, I have kids, so we sometimes buy uh, really high quality stuff, like the snowsuit we got for my daughter this year was a land's end snowsuit we got it secondhand at posh market was brand stinking new but it was you know on one of those sites and the person who took the time to ship it wrapped everything in tissue put a nice thank you card like there was a presentation on how your my, my the product was received now that might be a your service might be your product might be a service but there's still this experience this unwrapping like when you come to my onboarding call we're all there we're excited we're excited to work with you we're like yes this is team randy we're celebrating getting this going for you and you not being alone any longer and all these hands in this meeting are here to serve you and you know we welcome you to the process and at the end we say we hope this onboarding call was a wonderful experience and you're as excited as we are to move forward. Now, do you see, I plant the seeds of all the positive energy. So all they have to do is say, yes, this onboarding call was a great experience. Whether they thought it sunk or not, they don't know anymore because I told them and it was great. And they're, they're super excited and everything about us is gonna be brilliant, right? And I've already got them to sign in blood to say, they're gonna tell me all the time, I, working with your program and your team is so wonderful and it would just be better if, because I want them to stay in positive, stay in wonderful, but still show us ways that we can blow those socks off because I'm apparently anti-sock today. All right, and then the next part of your system is thinking about how are you scaling this? How are you encouraging and training your clients to send you referrals? Every single customer of almost 100 clients in uh, 17 countries have almost all come, you know, people came from speaking. All right, so half and half. So me being featured, we have no, no ads. We've run no paid ads. I have no marketing team but me speaking and we don't have it on my website. So you tell me how I got all those customers, right? It was one person after another sending them to me, personal email introductions. All I had to do is get on and close them. That's it right? And now guess what I have? I've developed a marketing team. We have got five that we're getting started with. We've hired the lead person. They're going to start going to Zooms and networking things on my behalf, and they're going to be speaking for me. So just think about how my business can grow. We've scaled to this level just with me. Now take 10 of me, you know, or five of me. If I could get to a hundred in less than three months, for what, um, because we're going to be doing that in the fall. So I'll be doubling it alone to the fall to uh, double our client base. So if I can do that in one to three months by myself, if I have a marketing team doing that out there for me, then I suddenly went from that's why people and companies say, if you hear um, the keynote speakers say, and once I broke that first million, the next million, it was 12 million and 4 million and 27 million because. Once you crack that code of taking yourself out of the equation, then you're multiplying by bigger numbers. So if in three months I could get to 100 new clients, which I'm telling you, I know I can, and I have five other people doing that in three months, how many clients is that? That suddenly becomes 500 clients in a three-month span. Do you see? So the, the math is astronomical, okay? It's truly, truly magical. My Yahtzee story is this. So it was a Wednesday night, it was a week night, and I am coming to my wrap and my clothes. And I was sitting there playing Yahtzee with my husband and my 11 year old daughter. And we had just walked on the boardwalk. It was the middle of the week. Nobody was rushing because it was a work night. We have work the next day and we still have things to tie up and loose ends to do. 
we were all relaxed and enjoying one another. And in my mind for a moment, the tasks of follow-up from a networking event I had just done came to my mind. And I took a deep breath of relief because I knew I had just assigned that project to my assistant, Patricia, and she was actually doing that work right now while I was rolling dice in the living room with my daughter and my husband. And that is the moment that I knew, and that was very early on in my, in my, uh, my consulting career of owning it myself and not being a business development for someone else, that I was bitten by the bug. This was addictive. I would never, ever go back to doing those tasks and running a life where I would work while my kid was in, in school or camp and then try to spend this block of hours for family time and evening and fun and then tuck my munchkin in and kiss my husband goodnight and then come back and work for another four to six hours to get all the crap done so that I could maybe sleep and get up and do it all over again. I would not live that life anymore and I don't want you or anyone else to live that life. I have included my link here. It's to go, Lance. And this is the last thing I'll say. You can really, truly, for just a few dollars an hour, um, find someone. I put in the word research and I put in a, pr a price range. I mean, but this price range could be from $2 to $10. And then you will have people that you can find from all over the world that can help you do something as simple as research. Now, I shared my link in um, the article. I'm going to put the article in the chat. I'm going to ask you to use my link. I do get brownie points from this organization if you use my link and don't just go straight to the website. The website is 100% free for you to use all the time. You can post jobs. You can, I manage my team through it. I pay my team through it. I track their time through it. Um, they make money just like PayPal does. So when I pay my team, through the platform, then they, they get a little bit of what would be going to the team member. Same thing happens if I paid my team through PayPal, FYI. So in this way, I'm able to manage everything much better. They take screenshots, I have a lot more control. And I have this wonderful place where I can post jobs and interview constantly without a lot of hassle or time. I also, so that you don't have to go that alone because there's still a lot I didn't tell you about hiring people. Um, I want David to go to my site here and see where it says affiliate program and get an affiliate link. I'm going to ask if you've been motivated by this video recording or by your time with us together to buy the joy of time and get a step-by-step 50-page -step guide and videos that will teach you how to hire, train, source, and work with your own VA so you don't have to figure out the systems. It's 127 bucks, but I would like David to get a percentage of that sale. So I'd like you to use his link. So I'll make sure that he gets a link and that we share it with his tribe and his community. Because I believe money is energy and we should move that money around and share it. And he brought me to you. So I would like to share with him if he chose to do that. Um, that's it. I'm Jessica Koch and I believe in systems. <laughs> Awesome. And I approve this message. <laughs> Let's give Jessica a hand. Awesome job. So we went through a lot of stuff there. Um, we did. I, it was, that was awesome. Let me, um, thank you for removing the, sh I'm going to bring it to gallery and then I'll spotlight anybody that has a question along with uh, myself. So if you have a question for, for Jessica, number one, awesome job. Wow. Are you passionate or what? Okay. <laughs> And I even forgive you for disagreeing with me. And we can take that <laughs> offline because I can explain to you why you're wrong. Uh, but that's OK. Um, let's let us um, <laughs> let, let's go around. I want to spotlight uh, I, somebody that could really benefit from this, I believe, is Dawn Tilger. And you haven't met her yet. So I'm going to put her on the spot again and add her. But Dawn, um, introduce yourself to Jessica real quick and um, open your mic and then um, and then you can if you have any questions or comments that would be great so i'm going to have a tutoring franchise so we go into the home um am i freezing up no okay uh, i loved your talk thank you um i took a lot of notes banana sauce take time to think sockless clients which is what i'm my goal is tell customers what to do next i need to be better at that and uh, the Go Lance um, site, so that's awesome. So Go Lance site, use my link. If you love me, you'll use my link. 
<laughs> it's in the chat. Thank you, Don. I love that. Yeah, what you do is fabulous. It's so needed too, especially with how things have shifted. Really cool. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments? Um, let's see. David Robinson, you've always usually got something. Why don't you unmute and and I'll bring you. Oh, you're you're still muted. Your lips are moving, moving, but okay. All right. Guess we won't uh, uh, hear from David. That's that's okay. That's all right. Let's see. Anybody else? Any other? Uh, you know, I know that this is a very engaged group, and and Jessica covered a lot of stuff. Randy, go ahead. Well, it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be me if I didn't have something to say, right, David? That's uh, right. Jessica, the first thing I can tell you is that I'm exhausted. <laughs> just 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 listening to this and trying to take some semblance of notes um but the one thing that really struck a chord with me is, is that yes i'm a, I, I don't charge for my consulting services and i do the majority of it on the phone with people um but i always try to leave every call with an action for them and an action for me um, and then that's how we start the next call uh, is, okay, so what did you find out or what did you think or what did you do or whatever, what did I do? Uh, and it keeps the motion going. And the only time I don't do that is if I got a dead fish uh, and I'm just trying to, you know, shake them off uh, and let them go. But, uh, and I try to do that as politely. But I really, I, I couldn't keep up with you. I mean, <laughs> I, it just, I cannot imagine what it's like to work with you or for you. Um, but it would be it would be exciting. I can tell you that. So best of luck to you. And I thoroughly enjoyed everything you had to say today. Oh, thank you, Randy. I would give you one more tip then. If you don't use it already, otter.ai. Um, I would, if you're on the phone, get your clients to give you permission to record all your calls. So you can put them on speaker and have a chat and Otter will record both sides of the conversation. Then you have that resource for your clients and yourself. Because I don't know if you about you, but my memory is not as young as I look. Also, you could take this video and upload it and you can just use the free version of Otter. It, it, you won't need more minutes than that. If you get a copy of this recording, I don't know what David's rules are, but let's just say you did. Um, remember how I told you to record yourself on Zoom with your process and talk to yourself through it? You could take that MP4 recording and upload it to Otter and it'll transcribe everything that was said so that you have the written version. Now you have to clean it up and edit it some, or you could hire someone to do that. That's what I would do. Um, but you'll have then the step-by-step -step notes of whatever. Um, so written, a written and a video with everything you do is right. one of my best recommendations also. And by the way, I talk to myself all the time. So use Otter because Otter is your friend. I never thought of that. Thanks. I appreciate that. David, now did your mic work or you did you you came off off mic? So I just want to make sure you're you would you do you have anything? No. Nope. Yeah, his mic's not working. Yeah, I think you got an issue with your headset there, buddy. Okay, that's fine. Ricky Jean, you got anything? You haven't introduced yourself and uh, go ahead and do that. And then if you have any questions, I know you've been on for a bit. Well, um, I have to agree with Randy. I was like, uh, uh, she talks faster <laughs> than, than I could ever talk. And so, but I'm driving down the road uh, thinking, I think I'm driving faster just by listening to her. So, so it, it must be, it must, it must be contagious, but, uh, no, I, I don't have any questions. I just was, uh, I was amazed at someone who actually can, uh, pull off what she is talking about because it, it's not an easy thing. Well, all I can tell you, Randy, is the one thing that I can tell about her is she's a mom and that's what a mom of seven kids. Um, if you don't have the ability to herd the cats like she's talking about, uh, so so that whole process uh, and needing to figure out how to automate, uh, I think has come out of survival, uh, her desire to survive in that role. Okay. So I, I, I would, uh, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I would, you know, that would be my takeaway. Uh, she also, uh, if you want to hear a little bit of her story, she she was on Warrior versus Zombie a week ago, Thursday. And so you can hear her story. And oh, by the way, Jessica, if you like that music that's in the, if you listen to the audio, 
it's the guy that you're just talking to here, Ricky Jean Wright. Ah, Ricky he's and I will have to talk someday. Remember, we talked about yeah. uh, you wanting yeah. to, you had some songs you wanted to to get out there or whatever. Yeah. So uh, that's, he's he's a guy you want to talk to. So, so in the interests of connecting dots real time here, uh, I would encourage that. Uh, any other, let's see, any other questions, comments? David has one. David? The other David. David Gurno. Thank you for the presentation. It was very educational. I can't be, I can't work too many times. Yeah, I think we basically got it, David, but um, you're, uh, we definitely need to buy you some ear pods or whatever, because <laughs> that, that's definitely not working. Uh, I, I got just of it is that there was a lot of good information there and um you need to figure out how to do some automation and stuff so that's amazing ricky did you have anything else no i i think that uh, a lesson learned for men this this during this session today is that there's a lot can be gleaned and learned from a uh, multitasking female <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And uh, you know what? It's a journey every day, as a famous songwriter says in the music. And, uh, you know, I've learned some things today. Like I said, coming out of the box here, um, one of the things that I, I thought was, uh, and if you didn't hear the whole thing, if you came on before she started, one of the things is what she just walked through um, was, was that uh, a LinkedIn um article and if you think about just doing your work more efficiently and then once you've done it having it um be able to be the reuse mm -hmm. i mean let's face it i mean for those of you who know i was a partner at accenture accenture was anderson consulting any large consulting firm basically everything that we're talking about here on a massive scale is being done. You say, well, they've got millions or billions of dollars to do it. Yeah, but they do the same thing. There's reuse, there's figuring out what the system is. And the thing that Jessica went through here was, was probably the most important thing in my, in my view. And I, you can disagree with me again, Jessica, if you'd like, <laughs> but I would just say that the most important thing here is take time to go through the process of what you're doing and just write it down, just document it so that you know what you're doing. And I can, you're rinsing and repeat, you're, you know, you're doing stuff, rinse and repeat over and I am, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not telling you, I do this all the time with this networking group, with everything that we do. I go through a process every day. And the question is, um, there's, I would still beg to disagree. There is unique value, but is it required for me to stay in business? Probably not. Right. So I would give you that. I would well, say. I gave you that, that everybody yeah. does have yeah. unique value. I gave you yeah. that back. I, yeah. I said, I agree with that part. <laughs> However, if you don't want to do all the things, you can reproduce anything you do and teach it. Sure. For the no, most I part, I'd, I'd say about 97%. You know, I mean, a lot of yeah. stuff we can teach. No, it's brilliant. And the thing is, I'm working with a client right now who's looking to retire. And it really is. Um, there's a ton of stuff that doesn't it's need done. to be um, done by him. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll use that pronoun. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't need to be done by him. However, when you get old, you get used to doing it and thinking that you're the only one that can do it. Right. And, you know, that's the thing. Randy, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to ask just one quick question, and you may have already covered it. How and where do you inculcate continuous process improvement? Because you are obviously very process driven. 
Yeah, so once we get a couple of things established, um, so like for this quarter, our, our goal is to uh, fine tune the HR departments and fine tune and get the marketing team up and running strong. I just got a, a CFO on board. So to get them taking over the invoicing process for my managers doing it now. And then next quarter, what we'll do is we'll, we'll stop developing new departments and we'll go back to all those departments and interview everyone who's involved in it from the receiving end to the doing end and, and have them take us through what could be better. What it, This would be easier for me if, so I like those statements, right? So um, I love what I'm doing with you, but it could be better if. Um, I love doing and working on this project, Jessica, but it would be easier if. So I get my team members to do the same thing that I get my clients to do because they're just another form of customer for me, right? Um, and evaluate that. And I also learned earlier on when I, we were scaling to this, to this uh, stage, where I was the bottleneck, right? Because mm -hmm. I needed I needed to hire more people, but then when I would hire more people, I also then had to train them. I didn't have time to train them, so that would take a long time to get a new team member onboarded. So then I had to go, okay, here I am. I am the bottleneck again. So I had to train some of the current team members to be leadership staff so that when I hired new people, then I could pass them to the leadership staff so that they would train them. And I did the same thing instinctively, interesting enough, as a mother of seven. So if you were five years old, one of your birthday presents was you got to use the step stool and start washing your own laundry mm -hmm. and you had to follow the checklist, but you got assigned a team leader, one of the older students, other older children in my team on my on my crew that would then monitor and watch you and take you through the steps to make sure you knew how to wash your own laundry. So they were in charge of their own laundry, but also making sure so-and-so got their laundry done right, right? So whoever it was. And so I'm doing that same thing in my company right now, right? And I'm taking myself out of the equation for the front load interviews in the first half of the hiring process too, where I'm not even involved until my management team has gone through them and they want to introduce them to me to be considered to be added to the company right so it's it's all about doing that and i'll, I'll give you another great word. Uh, jessica i i know you're you're we've we're, we've this wound book. you we've wound you up here but you there that's a good book um, but good let's, book. Get, let's let's do this let's give because we're at one minute till the top of the hour okay. and i want to give you one more hand i want to appreciate that and i know david you you i i spotlight I think, you i think i'm here Okay. Yay! Yay. Yes, success. in essay well it's interesting when you talk about systemization or process flows we used to call it iso 9000 david, which is david, what we did david david yep. david stop okay so i'm going to give you a give you the floor in a second but i we've got to land the plane because i know there's people uh and i want to be respectful at one o'clock and it is 12 59 so I want to, I, but, but I'm going to stay on and I, Jessica, if you can stay on for a minute, oh, absolutely. we're not going to, we're not going to cut you off, except that I want to make sure everybody knows that next Friday, we do not have a mastermind because it's now the 4th of July weekend. And so we won't have a mastermind next week. So don't show up.